Uh, for today's session, we're going to start with a brief introduction of our four panelists for the day. And then we're going to start um, talking about their experiences in their current programs, what their application process was like, and what their process and their experiences in, in their individual programs. We have some students that are residential and some that are doing their program online as well. Um, we still have a few more people joining us, so we're just gonna wait another moment or two. Um, thank you again for taking your time out of the day and um, feel free to leave any questions or comments in the chat and we'll try and get to them as best as we can. Great, okay, so we're gonna start our introduction of our panelists now. Wonderful. So again, um, welcome to the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology's um, current student panel uh, Q&A. And now I'd like to introduce our panelists. Um, first up, we have Sherry Snelling. Sherry is receiving, or Sherry has already received her BA from the USC School of Communications and Journalism and is currently pursuing a Master of Arts in Gerontology degree. She is the CEO and founder of Caregiving Club and she serves as chairman of the National Alliance for Caregiving and currently sits on the local board of the Alzheimer's Association. Next is Andrew Luhar. Andrew received his BA in biology and is currently pursuing a dual degree in the Master of Science in Gerontology and Master of Science of Social Work program. Andrew has experience being a direct care staff member in a community-based and family-focused home for children and families. He currently hosts a podcast titled Hash It Put, focused on mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual experiences. And he is also the Student Gerontology Association graduate student representative. Oh. Mm. Next well, is out last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is Elise Collins. Elise is currently pursuing a Master's of Arts in Gerontology. She is an author, speaker, and gerontologist. She embodies this through her books and yoga instruction. She is a certified relax and renew trainer and has instructed participants in a two year NIH funded study on the effects of restorative yoga for metabolic syndrome. She is also vice president of the Women's National Book Association of San Francisco. And our last panelist is Ryan DeLue. Ryan worked on his bachelor's in human development and aging here at the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. And he is also actively pursuing his Master's of Science in Gerontology as a progressive degree. He is president of the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology, Student Gerontology Association, and a member of the Tucker Seeley Research Lab. He's also previously performed research in the Longo Lab, interned at the Justice and Aging, formerly known as the NSCLC, and also interned at Wise and Healthy Aging. So I would like to welcome our panelists and thank you for joining us today. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So since um, a lot of the people that are joining the call today are prospective students, I would like to start by asking you, what was your experience like applying to the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology? Um, since some of you are um, online programs and residential, do you think that changed your experience of applying at all? Um, Andrew, would you like to start? So, uh, yeah, th thank you for that question. Um, pretty much, I was actually admitted through social work first, and that was kind of what got me into gerontology as became a caregiver. But uh, I applied for gerontology my second semester at USC, and it was uh, fairly easy because one, I had all my my school records already there. And also I had professors recommending me from the School of Social Work already. Um, but well, applying for social work, that, that same thing as the um, gerontology application, I believe, is just having your high school or even college transfer uh, transcripts, um, recommendation letters, and, um, and your personal statement. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Elise, what was your experience like? Yeah, it was pretty smooth. Um, I really actually enjoyed writing the um, statement of purpose um, or whatever that essay is called. I enjoyed writing the essay and um, 
I think the one snafu was there was this class that I had taken um, and I didn't even remember taking it because I, I took a long break between uh, undergrad and USC. And once I found it, it was very smooth sailing. That was the only little uh, riff. But other than that, I, I found it um, pretty simple and I got a lot of help from the counselor that was assisting me. He was very supportive and I felt like he was cheering me on and um, I really appreciated that. Great, wonderful. Um, Sherry, what was your experience like? Well, it's, it's interesting because I, very similar to Andrew and also to Elise, I was actually working at Keck Medicine of USC uh, when I applied. And this is about 30 years, 30, 35 years after I was an undergrad at USC the first time in uh, journalism and political science. So as uh, Andrew said, you know, all my transcripts were easily transferred. It was actually a little daunting to look back at the grades that I got as an undergrad. And of course, I was looking at some classes and going, oh, yeah, that was a Friday morning, 8 a.m. class. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, pretty smooth that way and had really wonderful recommendations from um, the people that I worked with at CAC and also uh, Maria Hanke was really wonderful. We were um, undergrads together in journalism way back when, so that was wonderful, the associate dean. And, um, and then the, as Elise said, uh, I thought that the counselors were terrific because she was really checking in with me and asking me, how are things going? Do you have any questions? I mean, it was really nice because having not been a student in so long, um, it was just great to have somebody who was kind of help, helping me, guide me. Great, wonderful. And Ryan, your experience is a little different from everyone else's. Can you explain yours? Yeah, so I am sort of did more of an internal process because I'm applying as a, or I applied as a progressive degree. So I'm getting my master's degree in one additional uh, year as opposed to applying after going through undergraduate. So in that way, my full sort of college experience has been a five-year experience with four years being undergraduate and then one year being master's. So with that experience, it was mostly, it was all internal um, in the way that I applied. I worked closely with the student um, advisor, Sarah Robinson, and it was a really smooth process. Um, it was in fact really fun because I was able to look at all the different programs I want to take and sort of see and envision what I want to do. And since I was able to complete so many of my other requirements through the honors program for undergraduate, undergraduate degree, it was a really easy transition. I had a lot of uh, courses I could choose from. Wonderful, great. So it sounds like everyone had kind of a unique experience to their own program, but with the help of admission counselors, they all had kind of a well-rounded, easy experience that helped them throughout the whole process. So thank you all for sharing that. Um, so now on Monday in our session, we had John Walsh and uh, another professor, Roberto, join us and kind of describe about their teaching experiences within the classroom. Um, I would like to talk about kind of what's your experience in the classroom, um, let's say about with exams and different kind of assignments. Um, Elise, would you like to start us? Um, yeah, I, I actually loved all my assignments pretty much. Um, there might have been a couple that were a little more challenging. Um, you, it's funny that you said John Walsh because one of my favorite assignments was writing a brochure for um, I wrote a brochure for a center that was going to be a mind body center with because um, I think today's um, older adults are going to want to do hip hop dance and K pop. I made this really cool flyer <laughs> and um, yeah, it just helped me put out my vision in the world. And that was, you know, it was a science class or that that's mind mind um, 580. Wait, what class is that? 585. I think it's mind and body experience and i love that class so much because it really uh, validated a lot of the modalities that i'm already using to work with older adults um pretty much all of the papers i wrote i loved i mean i, I was just shocked how much i loved all my assignments great thank you sherry would you like to explain your experience with assignments and exams Sure. Um, similar to Elise, I guess. I, I really loved all my assignments, too. Um, as a writer, so I, uh, I really loved a lot of the different writing assignments that we were given. 
Um, but then there were really creative ones. I took the Jero Technology course, which I think is only offered once a semester or once a year. Uh, it was typically in spring semester, but uh, really fantastic course. And one of the assignments there was we had to actually create a, a two minute video teaching an older population how to use new technology. So mine was around how to download um, the Spotify app and be able to you know, uh, create and curate your favorite music. So that was really great. But everything, I mean, the, the book reports, um, the papers, the research papers, the thought papers that we would have to do, sometimes it was really challenging working full time and then also having the assignments, but it actually helped create a lot of discipline for me that has continued now in my career because now I'm setting aside my class time to go and look at other webinars and kind of continue my education through viewing a lot of that, those things that are available to us or reading different research papers like the Alzheimer's um, International Conference is going on right now. So there's a lot of really great research that's coming out of that conference. So it's a, it was a really nice training for me to go through and, and become a student again and now apply that to my business life. Wonderful. Ryan, would you like to share your experience with exams? Yeah, I think I've, I think at least this goes for all my courses, but I found that they've been really um, at least applicable in the real world. I took a uh, research methods course, it was Jero 593, and sort of taking that course in conjunction with working in um, a number of research labs, I found that the th same things that we we're working on were pretty much the same things that I was doing every day in the lab. Um, I did a number of, uh, I think I did like a policy scan for that class as one of the assignments, which was totally new to me and I thought wow it's it's uh, a really great way to learn how to do it and the next month I had well, I was doing a policy scan in my lab and it totally prepared me for it and I thought wow it was a it was a challenging assignment at first but it really prepared me for a real world thing that I could use uh, in the lab. Great wonderful and Andrew how about your experience? Uh, my experience has been really good um, Today is my last day of, of, of summer school. So my last assignment was a 10th page paper. I mean, at this point of the game, it's, it's kind of easy just uh, to write papers here and there, especially during pandemic time. There's nothing else to do besides do homework. Um, and uh, yeah, but te tests, quizzes, homework is fairly easy. It's, it's got to have your, the mindset of having time management skills. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. So now that you kind of described some exams and different assignments that go in the classroom, can you explain the experience of the class as a whole? Would you say it's mostly lectures or is it kind of group projects and discussions with your other classmates? Um, Sherry, what, what do you think? Well, I think um, overall, I think the classes were really diverse in that some of my classes had a lot of really great guest speakers from the outside. So people who are actually in the world of gerontology and in different areas, that was always really great hearing what's going on. Um, there were a lot of different group assignments. I think using Blackboard for discussion was really fantastic and very thoughtful because it was so wonderful to get to see other people's perspectives and kind of their look uh, and lens on things um, so I think that was really great but I would say that the classes really were energizing in that they weren't all the same and the other thing I would say because I've been in the world of really gerontology and aging and caregiving um, for at least 17 or 18 years now um, it's very tr uh, translatable, if you will. There's a, there is a great real world application to what you're learning. I think sometimes people think if you get your master's, it's very theoretical. And, but it's, it really, I, I have found that it has completely enhanced my career and my business acumen. Um, and I'm just so, so glad that I did it. So, yeah. Wonderful. Ryan, what's your experience with classes? Yeah, I think. Um, to sort of build on that, I, I think almost every one of my classes have had some sort of group activity or group discussion um, sort of component in it. And I think it's uh, a lot of the professors have really sort of put an emphasis on collaboration and sort of building a network to outside and inside the class. And I found that to be really helpful and helps me really learn more than just what I'm learning in terms of the material, but also from my classmates and seeing 
in terms of what their perspectives are. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Andrew, your thoughts? Oh yeah, class is um, very applicable and uh, just you, you, you learn and you're able to take it to internship. Um, that's, what I've, that's what I've seen, uh, a little vice versa. You can take what you learn in internship and bring it to the class aspect of things as well. Awesome, and Elise? Uh, yeah, I think there was a wide variety of different uh, class discussions um, as Sherry spoke about different guest speakers. Um, and everything I learned, again, was so applicable. I go, it went w above and beyond what I expected. Um, and I, one assignment that uh, stands out to me was uh, making a video about an older adult for intro to gerontology. And that was a lot of fun. And uh, all collaborating with, like, it was four or five other students. We did a video on someone named E.R. Braithwaite. And I love that assignment <laughs> too. Um, and it was, it was really, um, yeah, uh, wonderful to see all the collaborations too that people did in that class. Wonderful, thank you. So it sounds like it's really community-based, kind of a close-knit family, and it encourages you to collaborate with a lot of your classmates as well. Um, Say that you guys had a question during your collaboration. Um, did you feel that your professors were receptive to questions, not only in the classroom, but say outside of the classroom for office hours? And Ryan, let's start with you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think especially with, um, you build a lot of relationships with your professors, like say Professor Walsh. Professor Walsh, I think, is a great example of that. Whenever I see him, he, we always say hi to each other. It, he always brings a smile to my face when I see him around and he always has time. Um, even if it's not necessarily to talk about the course content, but maybe just to talk about the waves and in terms of he's a really big surfer. So and I live in Malibu. So whether we're just around just talking about how the waves have been and where our weekend plans are, it, he's always been really accessible and really great, even though he has, he's so busy and has so much to do, but it really is an incredible experience. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Andrew? Yeah. The professors, oh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, like your um, our professor is readily available to answer questions outside of the classroom, inside of the classroom. Definitely, yes. Um, like I'm a caregiver for my uncle, and I was able to reach out to Dean Hankey or uh, even uh, Professor um, Cicero uh, for resources. And they were this is like a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they're not my they're not my teachers or they're my they're my resources for for sure. And my networking, you know, capabilities of using you know my kind of like my Rolodex of how to you know, who can I help, who can I ask for help and to get me the right places to be, to help out my own family. So it's kind of nice at, you know, like you said, um, nice, no, a close niche um, family for sure, because you were supposed to help each other out and stuff like that. Awesome, thank you. Elise? Yeah, I think that gerontology professors are unique and in, in this way that I can't even describe, but they're all really interesting people. And then they're very kind, like everyone in gerontology, it, yeah. I think it's a requirement or something. Um, another thing I would say is one of the classes I took, which was an elective, uh, it was spirituality, gratitude, and mindfulness and aging. Uh, I might have the, those words mixed up, but that class um, was taught by a professor of religion and gerontology or she has a phd in um religion and gerontology uh and that class actually has a club that meets every i don't know six months or a year so there's there's a lot of community uh, and um opportunities and professors yeah I, I i don't know people i'd rather hang out with or gerontology people in gerontology are my favorite people <laughs> 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 Wonderful, thank you. And Sherry? Um, yeah, I, I feel the same. It was kind of interesting for me because I went into this uh, where I had a couple relationships with, you know, uh, prior working relationships with people who wound up becoming my professors. So we would kind of laugh about it. And I would say like Donna Benton, who is wonderful. And if you haven't had her, she's fantastic. But we had worked together on 
different projects over the years and I said, you know, I had to remind myself to call her Professor Benson, <laughs> like when we were in class and Donna, you know, more on the outside, but everybody was really great. What I really loved is that um, the coronavirus hit in my last semester. So um, even though I was an online student for all of my classes, I would try to sometimes, I'm in Southern California, so I'd try to make it into in-person class at least once a semester. And, uh, but that was really great because we saw everybody come together and uh, Dean Hankey put together this Friday kind of chat, which I think is still going on. Mm -hmm. And it was students and it was faculty and it was, you know, whomever. and. It was just really great. It just felt like there was a community. And I think like what Elise said, everybody really kind of came together and is kind and helpful and supportive and open to chatting outside of whatever. So I think you'll you'll find that. I don't, I don't have any other experience in USC. So I feel a little spoiled because I talk to other people and they say, yeah, I didn't really feel that way, you know, going through grad school or, or undergrad or whatever. So I think it might be unique to USC. Mm -hmm, definitely. So it sounds like you guys have all had that sense of community with your not only professors and your classmates, but you've also been able to use them as a resource, like Andrew said, and be able to access all these different clubs like Elise. So can you guys describe what sort of other resources or opportunities are available for you as a student outside of the classroom? Um, Andrew. Um outside the classroom well um since i'm dual degree i'm able to use social works like career center other professors on that side um i know there's students that have disabilities so like they have a resource center for um writing centers for sure um what else mm. i don't know i'm sorry i can't really answer this question because no worries I, like I don't um really are there sort of any sort of events that the school hosts outside of say classes? Um, is there any place that students can go to relax? Oh, yeah. um, or are there any kind of other staff members that are also available to you? Well, I know that one of the questions in the, in the chat box was like, uh, what is uh, SGA, our Student Government uh, Gerontology Association? It's, and then, then they have the Gero Lounge as well to or kind of like hang out and chill and decompress from your day of school um i'd rather hang out with that lounge because it actually has couches in a cooler environment than my other social work lounge because it's just like a cafeteria style and it's not really cool in my opinion but uh um but you know ha you know you just have to um make it yourself and what you what you want from you your, your usc experience um you kind of ask you if you want to help you have to ask for it and um professors are willing to help you out in any other way as they could help you out so um yeah wonderful thank you so you briefly mentioned sga which stands for student gerontology association mm -hmm. um we're lucky because ryan is the president of this organization ryan would you like to talk about it a little bit more sure yeah um student gerontology the student gerontology association is sort of the overarching organization that represents all students in the School of Gerontology. So in that vein, we try to represent the best interests of all the students in the school. And we try to put on various events that sort of can cater to not only their, their sort of professional growth and educational growth in terms of bringing in different speakers and, and try to connect them with various leaders in the, in the industry, but also sort of their own personal growth. Um, we like to sort of have a lot of fun different events like bringing people out um, for free food and sort of connecting students with each other. We think that part of the education is really growing your network and sort of having that experience of each other because that's where you really learn a lot about yourself and about others. Um, so we really try to put on a lot of different events. We almost have an event every week um, and of course during this uh, pandemic it's the events are a little bit different, a lot less free food, but we're still trying to do our best and put on as many events as we can. Um, in addition to that, I feel like I'd be remiss to not mention our big event of the year, which is the alumni dinner, which we sort of didn't have uh, this year. We had a alumni happy hour, but the idea of the alumni dinner is to sort of bring together all students, staff, uh, professors, and alumni and sort of 
introduce each other, not only as a way network, but also to have a great time, a great night, and sort of relax at the sort of towards the end of the semester and, and look back at all that everyone's been able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, I guess also to add on a little bit to the, the larger question is, I think USC is great, especially School of Gerontology, because you get the accesses of a small community. Um, so being part of, say, the Student Gerontology Association or having those personal connections with your professors, which are really personal connections. And, um, you know, you spend a lot of time building those relationships, but also you get the resources of a really large institution like USC is. We have um, a lot of different resources from, say, the Writing Center. Um, we have Korshak Center for like learning. There's a lot of uh, sort of health, the Student Health Center, which is been really great for me. Um, we have, say, uh, Bo, the wellness dog, which is uh, this lab, I think it's a Labradoodle puppy. Yeah. Um, and he comes around to a bunch of different events and uh, he's a mental health, health dog. So you can pet the dog um, and just sort of relax with a dog on campus. And there's tons of free events, especially at the School of Gerontology. There's tons of free food, um, the holiday party, Almost every holiday, I feel like there's, it's always a company with a big food, a big feel, uh, fest, um, and it's great. Yeah, great, thank you. You've touched on a lot of opportunities that we host. Um, as online students, Elise and Sherry, what are kind of the opportunities that you're able to utilize? Um, well, I can say I uh, live in the Bay Area and I'm lucky that my brother uh, lives in um, Southern California, not super close to USC, but I did go down and take advantage of having a place to stay. Um, there is a lot of things that you can now do online. Like I was going to say, there's a yoga class that I went to in person, and now that's online through USC. Um, all those lectures, whenever I was down um, in Southern California, I would go and get the free food and go to whatever lecture, whether it was science or um, just a professor, sometimes the SGA, I went to the talk with uh, Julia and John Walsh because they're, they're amazing. And um, I think a lot of those things are online. My advice would be just take advantage of everything you can, call your professors. Um, the more you do that, the more you get involved. And I, I think in the beginning, I was a little shy. I was a little bit, um, you know, going back to school after a big break, a couple decades, uh, I, I was like, oh, you know, I have to have a reason to call someone or to um, engage with the professors. I would call into the classroom before Zoom. We would just call up and it was really funny because uh, you were, there's a little bit of a delay and it was almost like we'd always make jokes like we were calling from Mars or something because it was all like the, the, there's everyone laughing because you know what it's like if you're a student and someone calls in. So I would say call in as much as you can. Everybody really encourages participation and the professors love it when the online students engage. Wonderful. Thank you. And Sherry? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just from a class perspective, I think what was so interesting is having been online where I was just, I was usually watching it, not live. I would watch it you know, later in the week or whatever. So I, I felt maybe a little disconnected. I think that's why the Blackboard discussion was so great for me because that's where I felt there was a lot of interaction with the other students. But then my last class, we went to Zoom for the rest of the class and it was very much like this. And I remember, and Elise was in that class too, I think, and we had George Shannon, who by the way is so inspirational to me because as an 80 year old professor, I'm like, you know, way to go. Um, and but he was saying how much he liked this format because then all of us really kind of engaged a lot more. Sometimes it, you know, the class was really quiet. People were shy to raise their hand or, answer a question and all of a sudden it was it was very interactive so that was interesting and then just having been a USC undergrad you know like Andrew I would say uh, and, and like Ryan mm -hmm. USC offers so many wonderful resources and so you really have to stay engaged and participate but um, there's just so many different events and whether they're learning events whether they're social or entertainment I can tell you one resource that I'm dying that I'm going to lose, and that is the access to the library. 
um, and being able to get research papers. <laughs> I would pay to continue that access, by the way, as an alumni. You could put, put in a good word, Stephen or <laughs> Ryan. Maybe you could lobby for that. Um, but, it, but just really take advantage of participating as much as you can because it really is such a great environment. Mm -hmm. well, I want to say something about that because he had George Shannon and he's the best. And I uh, just, you know, he teaches 530, which I just ended today. Oh. And throughout, throughout the <laughs> summer, it was just him and I. And it was great because we would take breaks and he wouldn't start without me. That's how, <laughs> that's how cool he is. It's, he's like, he is part? great. I know. I love him. <laughs> and, back, and I'm like, I hear him because I have, you know, Zoom on and, and I'm like running to my room and like, I'm here. Let's, start, let's get started. So that bond, it's, it's, it's so, it's pretty awesome how quickly people are, you know, professors and, and student relationship happen so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a great one. Yeah. And that's what's great is that since some of our classes are smaller in size, you have that ability to form that really close relationship with your professors and staff at the school. But you also have that access of a huge research university to all the papers, materials that you normally wouldn't have in a smaller school. It's kind of like having the best, best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So um, now that you have access to this vast of knowledge on this major university, but also having the personal connections with your classmates, your professors, mm -hmm. the staff at the school, what would you say has been your most memorable or favorite experience in your program thus far? I'll open this up to the panel first. I could go first, I guess. My favorite, uh, even Ryan was there, was the it, when President Carol Fault was inauguration. That was the, the flag bearer holder, and uh, Ryan was there with me. Um, that was such a cool experience, uh, just being part of the, the face of the department. Um, but um, I'll, I'll say outside of school, but there's a thing called USC uh, Speakers Committee. And I saw Bill Nye, the science guy. I saw uh, Kareem Jules Jabbar. I saw, um, um, what's her name? Some comedian, uh, Ali Wong, this past semester before COVID hit. That was really cool. Um, so you see, oh yeah, I saw Dwight Schrute from the office come to <laughs> USC as well. That's just like extracurricular stuff that you, you get to, are able to go to and sign up for. Um, then uh, there's free events. I went to uh, a free soccer game at LAFC through USC. That was probably the coolest thing as well for fun activities. And um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Ryan, what's your favorite experience so far? I'm sort of struggling. There've been so many great experiences. I think it's, USC is a really special place because there's so much going on just in the Los Angeles area. Uh, we've had not the greatest football team in terms of looking at USC's historical past, but I think our, our football team's definitely on the rise. And I've had a lot of great times, like going to football games with friends I've made at in the School of Gerontology and, and seeing them in a whole different environment. Um, one of the more academic sort of extracurricular events that uh, I had was bringing Laura Trejo, who's the general manager of the LA um, City Department of Aging, um, and also alumni of the School of Ger Gerontology. And she came and spoke with students, and it was a, a really down to earth uh, conversation because, and I wasn't really expecting that when I, I asked her to come because she's just so highly in demand. And um, I, I thought that was going to be sort of like another lecture but it ended up being more of like a coffee chat with, with Laura Trejo. And it was just a really cool experience. And then after that, I was able to see her at a number of other conferences and she remembered me and, and we had great conversations afterwards. So probably one of those, I, it's either football or, or Laura Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, best of both worlds, academic and non-academic. Um, Sherry, what about you? You know, I think um, I think for me, and again, it goes back to my undergrad as well. One of the things that I really appreciate about USC is that USC people, students, staff, alumni, really support each other, and that's way beyond you know just being a student and being on campus or in class. And it also gives you great access. I was really lucky because when I wrote my book on caregiving, my first interview was with 
someone who was connected, a celebrity who was connected through USC, and it gave me that access, and it kind of, uh, you know, went from there. And then I got to interview a lot of uh, people I really admired, icons. Like, I, I interviewed Norman Lear. Many, many of you may not remember Norman, but in my day, he was a, an absolute icon in television. And um, he just turned actually 96 and he's amazing. I mean, he's, he's the most, you know, he's the most brilliant person, but I think so. I think it's that, that sense of community and, and actual loyalty, you know, we're kind of like a tribe, if you will, of USC people. And, and also then the access that you get to some really incredible, wonderful people that are kind of your heroes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The uh, Trojan alumni network is so vast and, yeah. Trojan help Trojans for sure. Yeah. Elise, how about your favorite moment or experience? Well, I loved uh, going to the campus, but I also want to think, imagine if I didn't have my brother and I didn't go down there, um, I think some of the, especially now, like the happy hours, <laughs> I mean, I've gotten to know a lot, people a lot more um, during this time in I went to the um, alumni happy hour. Um, there's a book club. There's so many ways to meet people. And really, people have reached out to me. Um, different. So yeah, I think that I just want to presence that because I know being further away, and also I think I'm the only one on the panel that did not go to USC undergraduate. Just the fact that I love USC. I won't say where, where, where I went to undergraduate, but, but um, it it's yeah it, USC gets in your heart I, I really and especially the gerontology department I mean I am so proud to be um, yeah a part of the USC gerontology department just because I I really feel it's in my heart mm -hmm. thank you thank you all for sharing that so now that you've shared kind of your most valuable experience or moment could you share one thing that you learned in some of your classes thus far that has really resonated with you Mm. Uh, Sherry, would you like to start? Sure. Well, um, I mean, so much. I, I, I just, it's amazing. I mean, how, again, I, I had 17 years in caregiving and aging going into this. And so I thought of myself as somewhat of an expert with a lot of experience. And, you know, uh, you get a little bit humbled because there's so much more that you can learn. Um, but one of the things that really strikes me is, again, I'll, I'll just it's because it's so top of mind right now is the Alzheimer's um, Association, the International Dementia Conference going on right now. One of the best classes that I took was the mind-body connection. And uh, so I had Paul Nash and we did all of the psychosocial um, aspects. So that was really more of the mind. But then uh, Dr. Aremia did all the body and the physiology and just learning about how the brain works and then how things like social isolation or loneliness can impact our health and impact our brain health uh, really stuck with me. And, and the little, you know, the science that I can speak now about microglia and HPA access dysregulation and all these other things, I feel really smart. And I actually go into these conferences now going, oh, I really actually get it a lot better than I ever used to. So that for me has been really, really valuable. I feel like uh, getting my master's was not just a vanity play. It was definitely a very good business move for me. Um, made me a better, you know, consultant and, and things that I do, a better writer. So Wonderful. Thank you. Elise, what about you? Yeah, I, I completely agree about um, learning um, all the things I learned, like pretty much every class helped me in um, writing and also I work as a yoga teacher and um, create programs to help people age in a healthy way and one of the things that I think was really important for me was that uh, gerontology is interdisciplinary and as a social gerontologist we don't you don't a lot of a lot of things in the well I don't even know if it's the real world but the 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 world out there for example yoga teachers they're not taught about the social aspect, the social influences of health, the social psychology of health. So it just, it, it took me leap. I mean, it's helped me so much and I can't wait to apply what I've learned in the real world because, and I think it, it's the same for biologists. If you're, if you're learning just about 
you know, how the body works or how a yoga pose works in your body. But then, you know, as a gerontologist, there's this kaleidoscope of real world things that affect you. And just to be able to speak about that or presence that and understand it and also go down to the brass tacks of like the HP access and the microglia, as Sherry was saying. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Ryan? Yeah, I think I took a course, uh, it was Juro 340 with Professor Cicero, and I learned a lot about policy, but I also learned a lot about sort of what I want to do. I, I came into uh, USC thinking uh, with sort of pre-med aspirations. I thought, oh, I'd love to sort of become like a doctor. I'd, I'd love to sort of go that medical path. And after being exposed to that class, I thought, you know, I think that there's a lot of work that also needs to be done in policy. I think that that sort of work really speaks to me. And, and before taking that class, I hadn't really been exposed to the policies that really relate to aging. And, and that sort of class really inspired me to say, oh, you know, I learned a lot here, but there's also a lot, so much more that I can learn. Um, and that really inspired me to like get an internship with Justice in Aging, um, which really helped solidify. Yeah, I definitely want to go to law school. This is definitely sort of an area where I'm really interested in. So not only did I learn a lot about policy, but I also learned a lot about myself, as cliche as that might be. Wonderful. Thank you. And Andrew? Yeah, definitely. Um, you learn a lot in your classes. And uh, my favorite, I mean, besides just knowing what I just learned this past six weeks of just the health course perspective and everything like that, you kind of like, you want to help out your, your, your senior clients, but it's like, oh man, this applies to my own life as well too. But uh, my other favorite class um, was an elective course about uh, comparison uh, medical model models. And you had to go to a uh, two, two nursing facilities, a five star and a one star and, and see the differences. And it kind of like, I make it, it has like an eye opening experience of like, wow, this is what I want in the future. And how do I get there? And um, compared to a one star facility and you kind of have to write a paper on it and you just have to like, like you see and experience it. And it's just, it, I don't know, just makes you have like a, make your heart strings pull more for these, the people that you learn and want to work with in the future. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I know some of our professors yesterday, like Jennifer Alshire and Kevin Davies said that it's great that the school is able to combine the sociology, policy and psychology side of gerontology with the biology side of well. So mm -hmm. while both sides are complementing each other, um, we're able to incorporate them and study them together. And that kind of sounds what a lot of you have briefly mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question for Ryan. Um, you talked about that policy class with Professor um, Cicero. Um, and the question is, are you, was the class more focused on policy just for gerontology or was it focused on uh, policy in general? It was mostly focused on policy relating to aging. Um, I can see if I can find the syllabus for it. It's been, I took that uh, my freshman year and I know that there's a 540 class taught by mm -hmm. Professor Tucker Seeley. Right? Yes. And, great um, class. That's a great class. <laughs> I can totally speak on, I, I haven't taken 540, but I know Professor uh, Tucker Seeley very well and I can only imagine that be an incredible class. Yeah, well, it's so incredible. Cicero, Cicero teaches 540 as well with um, um, Professor Jacobson and uh, it's like, uh, it's, you, you, have, you, you learn about the federalism, national and like state levels uh, and then you, they implement the aging as well. To answer. Yeah. And when I took uh, Tucker Seeley's class, which was fantastic, but it was taught as well jointly by John Pinus, who's fantastic. And he runs the USC, I think it's the USC Fall Prevention Center. Um, so he talked a lot about housing and livable communities. And that was really fascinating too. Awesome. Thanks. So it sounds like all these professors are kind of leaders in their fields, um, and some of them do have their own labs at the PhD level. What opportunities for research are there at the master's level, or have you guys inter interacted with any of that abilities at all? That's a great question. I would love to know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Ryan, since you've been in a couple of our professors' labs, maybe you would like to talk about that a little bit, bit? A little bit more. 
got muted. Uh oh, he's on oh. mute. Uh oh. I'm sorry, okay. I forgot to. Uh, I forgot. Right, I no myself. worries. Little no um, technical difficulty. But yeah, uh, my experience might be a little bit different um, because I've entered both those labs as an undergraduate. But um, yeah, because the school of gerontology is so small, I think that a lot of professors sort of uh, see students who are coming from gerontology as almost like unicorns. Um, and mm -hmm. it's it's been really helpful, at least for me, because I. I read up on some papers with Professor Longo and I thought, wow, this is some really interesting work that he's doing. I'd love to be part of it. And I sent him an email and got forwarded to a, um, one of the hiring assistants and, and I became involved in the lab in a matter of weeks, which was really quick. And then after that, uh, when I switched sort of my focus to policy, um, I was looking at our labs and I was thinking, okay, what kind of labs can I be involved in um, as a way to supplement my education? And, and I found Professor Tucker Seeley's lab. And I thought, wow, this is a really great lab again. So I, I emailed his lab and as well as a number of other labs. And um, I got a response right away. And, and um, sort of, I know that a lot of uh, professors have a lot of openings and opportunities for students. And I know not only are gerontology students involved in them, but a, the school attracts a lot of uh, majors from like other schools, um, a lot from like say Dornsife. I know a number of biology and chemistry majors who have sort of really been interested in the work and they, they've uh, interviewed and worked for say Professor Longo. Um, but I think being part of the School of Gerontology really enhances your marketability and your ability to work for the labs. And there's been a tons of uh, opportunities, at least in that way. I did, I never had a uh, class with Professor Tucker Seeley or with Professor Longo, but from some of my classmates, I, it sounds like it makes sort of the application process a lot easier. Um, whereas you don't really have to sort of email and go through like a, a more formal uh, interview. It's a little bit easier and less formal, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Yeah. A lot of professors do have that kind of availability to do research in some of their labs at the master's level. Um, it's just dependent upon, you know, reaching out to them and, and seeing what openings they do have per semester. Um, I have one more question for our panelists before we move into the Q&A section. Um, and that is for all of our applicants out there that are interested in applying to the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology, what would be kind of your one piece of advice to give to them? Do you mean for how to apply or? No, just their one piece of advice, either to apply or through the program or kind of going through your experience in the program. What would just be your one piece of advice? Become dual degree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you get best of both worlds and uh, you meet more people, more connections, more opportunities. Um, you look, I don't want to say look good on paper, but you do anyways. Um, you're also taking, I mean, I don't know how many uh, dual degree op programs that you have at Duro offers, but I know social work has nine throughout MBA policy um, with MPH and um, MPA as well. And uh, there's so many other uh, routes to use and utilize gerontology as well. So yeah, be dual degree. Yeah. yeah. And I would probably add um, what I think is so interesting that's happening right now, and a lot of it is just uh, sheer demographics and, you know, this longevity curve that, that we're now seeing with statistics and society. But, you know, gerontology has kind of been thought of as, I think, more of this kind of smaller discipline and, you know, not talked about a lot. And there was a really great article, actually, in a trade publication for the aging community called Stria. And it was how the gerontology degree and that gerontology function is going to become so essential to almost every single business um, uh, you know, uh, going forward. And it is because we're living longer. And so I think that if we can put this larger lens on being gerontologists, you know, um, right now I'm working with the financial services industry and they're just eating up anything that they can get on aging and caregiving. So I think having a passion 
for that life course, uh, you know, theory and looking, you know, as we do from the womb to the tomb, if you will, is really important. And I think it's going to give you such an important tool in your career, no matter what you decide to do. And it's not just staying within the traditional aging services or long-term care services. I think it's really across the board now. Wonderful. Elise? Yeah, I would agree. I, and actually, you get a free um, subscription to Straya. Straya is great. Yeah. Susan Donnelly is a good friend. So yeah. anybody who wants to write articles, I can put you in touch with her. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I would just say if you have, I mean, I felt like, Okay, I'll just tell a funny story. My son is, um, he's now, well, he's gonna be a senior at NYU. He didn't even get into USC, but we did tour the campus. And I saw like gerontology and I was like, what is that? I mean, I literally, it was like a twinkle in my eyes. Like, what, what is gerontology? I had no idea what it was. And I was with my brother, who's also a USC alum. And we were walking around the campus and I was like, I know that they're gonna kill me if I run off and check out gerontology. So I just, I stayed with the tour. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it stayed in my mind. And I kept going, what is that? It's so, and I mean, then a couple years later, I applied and I never looked back. I love, I love gerontology so much. So if you have sort of an inkling about it, I would say pursue it. Um, even in the beginning, I was not sure. I was like, is this, is this for real, this online thing? And then my first class, my favorite class um, was the sociology of, uh, or aging family. It was called aging family. Um, yeah, so I'd say definitely go for any degree. And you can also make connections in other departments because I've worked with somebody in um, social work, another professor, because we had some interest in uh, centenarians. He's done a lot of field research in India. So I sought that professor out and actually I found him online and he was one of the reasons that I applied to USC too. And he's not even in gerontology. And Ryan? I think sort of being in the School of Gerontology, I think you have, you really have the ability to be as ambitious as you want to be. I, I think I owe a lot of the things I've been really proud of to be part of the School of Gerontology. I've applied to a number of scholarships and positions where I didn't think that I was quite the right fit or I didn't think that I was like uh, necessarily a shoe in And I thought maybe I, I'm probably going to get rejected, but I might as well shoot my shot. And for so many of them, I've, I've heard yeses. And I just, I feel like a lot of it has been due to my involvement in gerontology and sort of having a unique story that not a lot of people, not a lot of other people can tell and not a lot of other people are even aware of. Um, so I really think that not only sort of being ambitious, but also sort of promoting, advocating for the field is really important too. And I think it, you find so many connections and being free and willing to sort of let that path go um, and sort of see where it takes you is, is really important. And so far it serves me well. And I, I'm really excited to see where it'll take me. Great. Thank you all for sharing. That was very insightful. Um, so we're going to move into our Q and a section. Um, this question is directed towards Elise and Sherry. What kind of motivated you and what kind of advice could you give to students that have been out of school for a while and want to return? Mm. Um, well, I can answer that one. So as I, as I said, I had been out of school for quite a long time. And um, at first it was a little daunting to think about. I'll be honest with you. Again, I had lunch with Maria Henke, who's the associate dean, and uh, she pushed me. She said, come on, you've always said you wanted to do this. You've got to do it. You have to do it. So we kind of hatched this little plan that, uh, you know, what would I do with it? But I, I may, I actually did a cost benefit analysis because having been in the, in, you know, the industry of aging and, and caregiving, I had to really say as an older person, I'm going to go ahead and fund this education. What's going to be my return on investment? And um, I can tell you, it's been threefold already, even while I was still a student. Um, you know, just being able to talk about gerontology and talk about it in a different way and use it as part of my consulting business, which has been phenomenal. Um, but I would say, don't be afraid. Um, and then, uh, you know, when you're applying, think about 
all of the life experience that you're going to bring to your um, student experience. And I think that's one of the things that we learn in gerontology, right, is that we gain a lot of wisdom over the years and you're going to bring that back into this student experience at the same time becoming a student again as I said earlier on gave me a lot more discipline I felt like I was pretty organized before but boy now I am really that time management and also carving out time to still learn to still go and watch you know different webinars to still read research papers and seek those out um, has been really important and I think also learning that what I love about gerontology, if you, can, you can't tell, I'm excited about it. Um, I think it's the coolest thing right now. I think being a gerontologist is super cool. Uh, but it's about balance in life. And that's something that so many of us struggle with, right? And um, I, I struggled with it when I first started working, that work-life balance. And we learned that if you are out of balance, you know, biopsychosocial, that's optimal wellness and optimal aging when you have that balance. So I, I can't say enough, but I think that I think whether you're just coming off your undergraduate degree and you want to continue learning because this is a great future being a gerontologist, uh, no matter what you do, or if you've been out in the field and you're looking to enhance your career, I think it's it's well worth it, definitely. Wonderful. Thank you. I would just, I would add too um, that all generations are valued at, um, USC gerontology, Leonard Davis ger gerontology, which is, it's great for students that haven't been in school for many years. And it's great to just see that, to have that modeled because that is not out there in the world. To have professor, um, you know, professors that are 78, 80 years old and um, not everybody has those experiences of even being around older adults or professors and a lot of i think a lot of the older students i found especially when we went on zoom we were the more vocal ones because when i was younger i was more quiet i was like i don't know if i know the answer and more shy and now i i have a lot of life experience so i'm not shy to share that so you also become kind of a teacher as an older student and it does take a little adjusting, but I think once you um, adjust to school, you, you do get this really um, great confidence that comes from if you're passionate about gerontology. I mean, the world is your oyster. It's such a great place for someone who hasn't been in school that wants to learn, I think. And I, was, I would also add, as much as we bring to it, I have to say that I don't have children, so I, I don't have the benefit of having, you know, a younger generation that's telling me what the latest, greatest, like, TikTok thing is or whatever, but being able to really have that interaction with younger generations, younger students was great, because, like, when I was in the Gero technology class and I was told, you know, you're going to have to create this video, and I was like, you know, <laughs> I'm used to hiring a video crew. So it was wonderful to reach out to, you know, the, the students who are digital natives, which I'm not, and say, how do I go about this? What do you think? What do I use? Um, so I really love that intergenerational um, interaction as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. So we are approaching the top of the hour and, and that concludes our time for that we've allocated for today. Um, Andrew has left his email in the chat if you do have any additional questions for him. And I have just dropped mine in the chat as well. Um, if you do have any additional questions that we couldn't have uh, time to answer to today, please feel, uh, feel free to reach out to our panelists, to me with any other questions that you may have. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and attending today. We have two more sessions in this week, one tomorrow at four, which is with our alumni, and then one on Friday at 9 a.m. for the application process for all application questions. Um, I also want to thank our panelists for your time today, um, speaking about your experiences in the program and at our school, and just answering all of those great questions. So thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Okay, all of the emails are in the chat. Please feel free to reach out with any other additional questions that, again, we didn't have time to answer. Um, we appreciate it, and we look forward to you joining our other sessions and hopefully one day becoming a member of our little community. So thank you, and fight on. Fight on.